What's up guys, I'm gonna unbox and review this new Netgear Nighthawk RS500. It's a tri-band system, BE12000 rating, up to 3,000 square feet, has 2.5 gigabit ports, and can handle up to 120 devices. So we get a little quick start guide in two different languages. We'll get some info on the back right here. It does come with a 30 day trial of Netgear Armor, which offers additional protections. We get to contact us for help. The power supply is 100 to 240 volts and it's 42 watts of power. And it comes with a Cat5 e ethernet cable. We got the LED indicators in the front, sync WPS button, LED on and off button. We got some vents up on top. We got a little QR code to scan that I'm hiding when you're first setting up. We got a factory reset. We got power on and off. The top port right here is 2.5 gigabits. The next three are gigabit ports. We got a USB 3.0. We have a 2.5 gigabit port for the internet. That's where your modem would connect to. We got the power supply right here. And it is wall mountable if you get the correct accessory for it. So I had a chance to play with this thing. I did all the speed test range tests. I have all those numbers right here. We'll go over that momentarily. I tested it with the following Wi-Fi 7 device. And just as a heads up, I do have the latest iPhone, the 16 Pro Max, which is a Wi-Fi 7 device. However, it doesn't appear to have the 320 megahertz channel width and pretty much can't go as fast as these two. It has nothing to do with this router. It's with every router that I test. Uh, with this router, I was getting close to the 1.7 gigabits per second mark. Uh, for the closer test basically. So I, I did a separate video comparing actually these three phones to each other, testing on a different router as well. So again, it has nothing to do with this router, it's with pretty much any router. Uh, this thing just can't go as fast, so just as a heads up. So this router is fantastic. It's actually very good in terms of performance. There was only one issue worth noting and it's it's an issue that there's an easy workaround for, but I have to mention it because I, I saw it, so I'm going to mention it. So um, the only issue that I noticed was that it wouldn't allow me to pick my same Wi-Fi name and password as my existing router. So the same SSID and password. And uh, normally I do that, so all my devices automatically connect to that. And uh, this one, for some reason, some of my devices would connect and others would not. And I tried playing with the settings and everything and just it just wouldn't work. Uh, but as soon as I changed the Wi-Fi name, everything worked. And as soon as I changed the password, uh, keeping the same Wi-Fi name, uh, when I switched to uh, info on the phones and everything, that connected as well. So it's just didn't like my exact same Wi-Fi name and password for some reason. Um, so I just kind of went with a different Wi-Fi name and uh, no drops, nothing like that, everything was golden. So that was the only worth, the only thing worth noting. And actually the RS200 that I recently reviewed had the same issue. Uh, the RS300 that I reviewed did not have that issue. Um, so I'm hoping there's a firmware update that comes and resolves it. So that was pretty much it. That was the only thing. So um, pick the different Wi-Fi name, no, no issues, no problems, everything connected to it, everything was golden. Okay, so we'll start off with the internet speed test. So as you guys know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. For me, that would be five gigabits per second upload and download, unless of course the router itself can't go that fast. So in my case, this thing goes, it comes, when my internet comes in at five gigs, it gets capped to 2.5. Uh, and then I could take out the 2.5 and bring it to my computer. On Ethernet, I get 2.5 up and down, no problems. Uh, Wi-Fi devices, however, are a different issue. So looking at the Wi-Fi 7 speeds, we got very, very good speeds for the Internet speed test. 2.3 down, I mean, that is very, very close to maxing out. Uh, very close to the Ethernet speeds. Uh, the upload wasn't as fast, but it was still pretty, pretty fast. So to find the true performance of this thing, I need to do a local speed test. So I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer. So this way, I don't go through my ISP, my internet service provider, and I don't go to a public speed test server, which can be busy at times. So this is more of a consistent thing where I just pretty much isolate the router. And looking at these speeds, there is an improvement overall. Uh, so the download speed pretty much got to just about these 2.5 gigabit speeds and the upload was better It didn't quite get there, but 2.2 was still very very fast overall so then <clears throat> We move on to range test now range will vary Drastically by location essentially the more obstructions you have the less range you're gonna get so if you're in between floors You have a lot of, a lot of walls or if you have thick walls and things of that nature all of that typically hurts your range so in my case, at 20 feet away inside my place, 
I'm pretty much getting the same exact speeds for the download and for the upload, I pretty much got exactly the same speeds, just about basically. So pretty much not a drop at all, which was awesome. At 50 feet, this is when I'm outside my place, so there is a drop. However, the download was still very, very fast. So was the upload. And then we move on to 100 feet. And at 100 feet, this is when I'm actually across the street and I'm doing my speed test. I was still getting 945 megabits per second. So almost gigabit, uh, almost gigabit speeds on the download. Uh, not quite as fast as on the upload, obviously. So we, we are definitely seeing a degradation here. Uh, but still very, very fast speeds, very usable speeds overall. Now for setup a configuration, you could either use the Nighthawk app or you can actually set it up using the browser. So I'm like pointing to my computer as, as if you guys could see what I'm talking about. Uh, so yeah, so my computer's over there, so I, I point to it a lot. Um, but basically, uh, if your computer hooks up to this thing via Ethernet, you don't even need to get the Nighthawk app. Uh, I like the Nighthawk app, but it's technically not necessary. You could do away with that. You could just use a browser. Um, however, the Nighthawk app is really a, like a simplified interface. It tells you what to do, uh, kind of walks you step by step and stuff. And the browser interface kind of does that as well. Uh, but the Nighthawk app kind of makes it a little more simplified than that. So the Nighthawk app in general is a very, very simplified app. Uh, there's not a lot you can do in there and it's kind of by design where they kind of just want you to do the main stuff like set up your Wi-Fi name and password if you want to connect all the bands or separate out the bands because you could do separate 2.4, separate 5 and a separate 6 gigahertz SSID uh, Wi-Fi name basically or you could combine them into one for uh, the main one. For the guest one it's just three separate ones essentially. Um, so yeah you could set up the Wi-Fi name, you could do the guest, you could do an internet speed test you got super basic parental controls, basically like pause and unpause. If you want more advanced parental controls, that does require a separate subscription. Um, and then you can look at some reports and basically update your firmware and stuff. So that's kind of the gist of the Nighthawk app. Very simplified, very clean. You can also see the devices you're connected to and also the Netgear armors there should you choose to sign up for it. It does come with, a, again, like a 30-day free trial basically. Uh, so if you want to tinker with it, then you go to the browser interface and there's way more options there. Um, so you can do all of that stuff and more. So you can, in addition to all of that stuff, you can set a VPN. You can set a Wi-Fi schedule to have Wi-Fi off at certain times of the day. You could block sites. You could block apps. There's, there's like additional things you could do. There's even a VLAN option. I didn't play with that, but there is a VLAN option as well that you can actually set up when you go to the browser interface. So uh, you could set up your DHCP rules and all that stuff is pretty much within the browser interface. So in summary, this router is pretty much really good if you have internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits. Uh, you have two of those ports, so it could go in at up to 2.5 and come out at up to 2.5. I also forgot to mention that you can also share a hard drive among your network if you wanna do that. Don't expect crazy fast performance out of that, but it is an option, and again, you would set that up in, in the browser interface. That's where you would uh, set the settings and stuff. But the only issue, again, with this thing was it wouldn't let me use my existing Wi-Fi name and password. So as long as you use a new one, if you do run into that issue, you may not run into that issue. I did. Uh, but aside from that, solid performance and very good range. So performance-wise, this thing was really, really good. So I was genuinely impressed with this router. So let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button. I have the RS600 that I'm currently testing. And that I'm going to wrap that up sooner than later. So then I can get all of the, basically, I'm going to compare the RS200, 300, uh, 500, 600. And I've done the 700. I'm going to retest the RS700 because I tested that a very long time ago. So I, I will retest that one, get some new numbers in case they're different. And uh, with the firmware updates and stuff like that, I also have newer phones. Granted, I have tested it with the Wi-Fi 7 device. So, But anyways, that video is coming up. So I will be doing a comparison of the Wi-Fi 7 Nighthawk router. So smash that subscribe button. <laughs> I'm sorry to mess up here. Uh, and that's pretty much my cue to end the video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.